about talk. swinging that club into that bank? Yeah, he says, I have a velvet coat on, a corduroy pants. I have Buster Brown shoes. They are patent leather shoes with buckle, you know. They had high stockings and short pants. They didn't, what's the knickers? They were just cut off. <laughs> but that's what the dress be in. And I, I came into the shops and I says, Mr. Callahan, the course is closed today. Could I have a lesson? I'm six years old. He says, yes, bloody. I want you to take this Marsha Nublik. I want you to walk out to that bank out there. I want you to stand about two feet away. I want you to bury that club head into that bank. But if you come here with mud on that sleeve, I'm going to kick you right in your rump. So as to taking that red sleeve and hitting it with you your left hit arm. Hit it with the butt in the stick. You're, Boom. That club is coming free. You cannot keep up with the speed of the shaft because you're, you don't have any connections. We're disconnecting our sense of feel. All we can feel is the end of the arm. This is working. If you try to keep up with that, you slow it down. A lot of people you can't really to, add anything to it. You're not adding anything. See, you're, the rotation of the shift and rotation of the body is causing the arm take. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's a matter of the action of the hands that gives the acceleration. And it's amazing how much you can add to the acceleration of the club. His first action, you're going to feel like it's the, the look here, the supination of his left forearm. Supinate, left forearm. Look here, then dorsal flex. Back. Right. Boom. That's the right, right hand, and the elbow force, okay. As Mike goes back, coordinating, okay, you go ahead and go back? coordinating his hands with the action of the legs, ankles, knees, and hips. You will see that that blade always stays on the outside of the shaft. The head never gets behind the shaft. You never know where it is, and you got to make a, a tremendous motion. And you never know where your square is. And when you say behind, in front of the shaft, in relation to people, it's out okay. Here. That means it's in front. Yeah, that, that, see this is front, this is side. And this would be side. And that would be back. See, yep. these people, every one of the pro teachers today is that. Well, hell, why take and open up something you've got to close? It's not going to aid you at all, right? Mm -hmm. Why do something you don't, it won't be advantageous to you. Okay. So I, I leave all that superfluous motion out. Okay, and, and, and so what we're doing is this this club face is always in front of that shaft. It stays on the outside of the shaft. Going on back. the outside. This is called the outside and that's called the inside. Right. Now this is called the inside. Now, yeah, okay, so if I, I took that head. club and I went like that, that would be on the inside. Yeah. So, okay, you got it? Yeah, I tell you one thing, I'm giving a chart one lesson. And mm -hmm. say I'm always this way with mm -hmm. his legs. He did just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now look at here. Okay, right, so we, we keep it in front right. of the shaft. Now, okay, now, as we shift. Now, now, now you see how the legs and arm are coordinated. Mm -hmm. All 12 leg levers, the ankles, knees, hips, shoulder, elbows, and wrists, have to be synchronized. Okay, now it's in front. Yeah. But as the club gets onto the... See, as you, as you fold the shoulder joint and the elbow joint, the club is, is now, is still on that side. What do you mean now? The club isn't, the club at the top is not that way. See, if I take this thing up, up like this, mm -hmm. and I go up to here, it's still up there. But when you bend this arm, this arm, the, right the shoulder, give, the shoulder, the plane comes up, and it's, it's more like that. It's, is actually the face 
edge of the face is, is on the plane of the shaft because you rotated 90 degrees with it. Okay, well, now you're talking about one of the most intricate things in the whole golf swing. Billions of dollars have been trying to describe what you're saying. So explain a detailed action. Like if I took my hand right here, yeah. and, and this is a major coaching point, mm -hmm. is like when we set up to the ball, our hands are in line with our yeah. arms. Well, no. Not like this, but no, like yeah. that. Yeah. The club is above your plane. And at no time do we ever cock our hands like That's this. That's called a radio flexion. It's all no deviation. Right. That is, an, mm -hmm. but when a person does this and that, he has to do it to compensate for the bad motion of, of radio flexion or the deviation. You don't have to have it. But the right hand is, it's, it's in line with the right arm. Yeah. And so up until, if I just stood here like this. That's then, the way the work is go. You see, now when you do that, this left arm collides with the right arm here, and this right hand is underneath the, that. You're not trying to make your right arm go over the left. If you do like a twist well, apart. You have no idea where the ball is going. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why these people smother hook so many bars. But and, when everybody looks at their golf swing and they take it back, the side action, that's what I wanted you well, to see the plane. If I, let me have that white pole over there, the long one, look, let's see. Now go on to the top of the back swing. Mm -hmm. Which way you want me? Okay. That way. Mm -hmm. That way. Now if I took a line here, that base has the plane of the swing, like that. Working across this seven cervical. Now as you work across the seven cervical, this shoulder rotates on the plane to the ball. Let me show you that. Come up here, let me okay. turn it over this way. Which way? Now you face that way. Okay. Now, I, I want to touch the seven cervical. That's it. Now, this clavicle bone is coming, or rotating down from this point to the ball. And that way, controls the, the perfect plane. that it doesn't matter what you do to get your hand back in line arm, you have to unfold the elbow. It's the snapping of the elbow that causes the hands to uncock. You don't purposely uncock your hands. You do not purposely. It's a reaction to the snap. Look here. If I had something like this, it would throw that hand. Understand? Mm -hmm. It is a reaction to the snapping out. To of, the, of the... It, it, it you know. But what I think what most people don't understand is in order for the golf club to, to get this hand back in line with this right here is, you know, we set it, yeah. and then it folds. Yeah. Now the hand is no longer in line with the arm. There's only one thing that happens to get that thing back, and that's you got to unfold thing. it back to come back into the golf ball this way. Everybody, watch, watch, watch this. Uh -huh. If I had my hand here like this, and this. I did this, and then I raise this. But I'm not only going to raise this, but I'm going to retract. See, this is going to the humerus bone. This is, not a, is raising here. The humerus is folding back. It's a double action. So it's a lower arm and the upper arm from the elbow to the shoulder. It compound action. And the, it, actually, what is actually happening when you come this way? This elbow is getting lower, understand? You don't feel it being lowered because you have this infraspinatus raising the arm, but it doesn't raise away from your body. It raises in line from the address position and maintaining that same address lane, okay? Mm -hmm. but, the, but the elbow, is, is and, and like I say, basically all we're trying to get a person to, just like you said, you address the ball off the left side and you hit it off the right side. Yes, see, a when, side stroke. When we flex the right knee and we drop the right hip, it confixes the, the left hip. 